Receive and be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is my desire to honor you. I worship you. All I have in me, I give you praise. All that I adore is in you. Like 
out and say a word of prayer for Thank yourself. You, pray that the oh, word you will see this my afternoon will be able to like your you, life. Lord, my God. No more like Open your mouth and begin to no pray. Way, Lord, my God. That the word that God, God will receive this afternoon will be able to make it to your life. No more like God. We will discuss the word of God from your heart. That God of heaven will be able to make it to your life. Let God be the judgment of the the world There is no one like you, Lord, my God. There is no one like you, Lord, my God. We worship you, we invite you, we you, 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 Lord, I pray that you will speak to me, speak to me to your people, oh God, speak what you have in mind for this season, speak what you have in mind for this moment, Lord, speak to me, I release my tongue, I release my hand to you, oh God, may I speak of my hand, but only what you want me to speak of that to me, oh God, that at the end of the day, your people will be glorified, your people will be honored, and your people will be revived. Will be revived. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. We can have our seats in the presence of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. I came into Germany last year, and when I came into Germany, one of the things I have learned from the crowd is not neglecting the presence of God and the house of God. Amen. My mother taught me that from the beginning. Amen. So when I came into Germany, I started looking for where to worship. It was a concern for me. I started asking people, if I see any black person, the first thing I will ask you is that, are you a Christian? <laughs> so, and when they confirmed to me they are Christians, I was say, where do you worship? And I had some recommendations to the point I went to one um, last year, but it was a wonderful service. I have to be very sincere. It was wonderful, exactly what I wanted. The presence of God was in their midst. But I had a problem. I, at the end of the day, I told my friend, I think I will not be able to be coming. She said, why? I said, because of the distance. I'm looking for a church in Ham. I want a church in Ham because I was working in Amazon last year and it was tough studying and working at night. So I needed to have a church in Ham that I don't have to be traveling very far on Sunday. So it made me to sit down and be like, God, please, I need somewhere. I need to worship. I have to be worshiping. And one day I was in my kitchen. I started hearing Nigerian praises. I said, where could this be happening around me? Mm. I came downstairs, I traced the sound, and that is how I came here. Mm. And I met Brochers that day, and I'm so happy to be here, and that is how God confirmed to me that this is where I need to be worshiping. Yeah. And one thing about me is that I love consistency. One of the reasons I couldn't continue there is I wouldn't want to go the first day, and maybe another day I won't come. They will be calling me, where are you and all of I don't really buy into that, right? Amen. So I am so happy to be here Amen. and I am so thankful for this fellowship. I'm so thankful for this church. And being here, I don't regret any second in this church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise Master Amen. Jesus. Amen. And I want to use the opportunity to appreciate our pastor. He is truly a man of God because many things I see in him he have a selfless heart. If you are under um, Pastor Steve, Stephen and Pastor Kelvin, please forgive me. If you are under Pastor Kelvin and you are not growing both spiritually and in character, you need to check yourself, right? Because he is a very good example. He has a very liberal heart. It's not everybody that will give members opportunity to grow both in the spirit and in character. I am so grateful for the opportunity to stand before you all this afternoon. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the privilege. 
I don't take it for granted. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. So we are going to be having a teaching this afternoon. I want to appreciate everyone too, not only pastor, praise the Lord. I love the love of God in our hearts in this church. Praise the Lord. May all of us be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So today, when pastor told me you will be ministering this Sunday, I had to go back to my heart. I had to go down to my spirit because I wouldn't want to stand here and, you know, at the end of the day, what I'm going to say will not make sense to anyone. So I had to search the mind of God. I said, God, what are you saying in this season? What do you want me to say to your people? I don't want to speak of my own, but I want to speak what you want me to speak. Praise the Lord. Amen. I had a lot of things I would have talked about because in this season, there's something the Lord is actually teaching me and it has to do with forgiveness. I know a lot of people are battling with this. I'm not trying to say that I have unforgiving heart, but there are circumstances when people hurt you, you, you have the legitimate right to be angry, right? Mm. But there, God has taken me to the length of loving people who have genuinely, intentionally hurt me. And I know a lot of people are actually battling with this unforgiveness, especially in this current age. I wanted to talk about that, but he restrained me. Praise the Lord. Maybe the time hasn't come for it. So he led me into another topic, which we are going to explore today. And at the end of the day, I know that many of us will receive answers to our doubts. Many things that have been troubling our minds. Praise the Lord. And what we are going to be exploring today is a topic I titled the season of testing. Praise Master Jesus. The season of testing. And the anchor scripture will be taken from Genesis 22, 1 to 19. It's going to be a long reading. I'm going to do that quickly. And um, please pay attention. Praise the Lord. If you are there, shout hallelujah. Genesis 22, 1 to 19. Genesis 22, 1 to 19. And I read. Some time later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain that I will show you. Genesis 22, 1 to 19, praise the Lord. 3 says, early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey. Why? I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Genesis 22, 1 to 19. 6. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the bond offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the bond offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and led him on the altar, on top of the wood. Then he reached out his head and took the, the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have 
not withheld your son, withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there, and there in a ticket, he saw a ram caught by his horn. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of, the, of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Then Abraham returned to, to his servants and they set off together for Beersheba and Abraham stayed in Beersheba. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus. Amen. When we read, like I mentioned earlier, I said the topic is the season of testing. And by the end of this service, we must have explored five things, which is number one, we are going to talk about what is a season of testing. Then we are going to go into how to know you are in a season of testing. How to know you are in a testing season, praise the Lord. And we are also going to talk about how to respond to the seasons of testings in our lives. When you find yourself in a season of testing, how are you going to respond to this season? And I'm going to also give you examples of people who have passed through testing season in the Bible. So you will know that you are not the only one who have gone through what you are going through. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to also, we are going to explore why we go through testing season. Why you have to go through what you are going through. Praise the Lord. And we are also going to talk about how to know the season of testing is over. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. So because of time, we are not actually going to waste a lot of time. We are going to be fast with it because I want at the end of the day your heart and so many questions in your heart, in your heart, I pray that before the end of the day that the Lord is going to answer them in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I, at the end of the day, I pray that this song I'm about to sing now will be a song in the heart of many of us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you know it, you can join me. Dependable, dependable God. It doesn't matter what comes my way, you are still good. Intentional, intentional God. Everything is turning around for my good. Dependable, dependable God. It doesn't matter what comes my way, you are still God. Intentional, intentional God. Everything is falling around for my good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I pray this will be the song of each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything will turn around for our good in the mighty name of Jesus. No matter what we are going through, no matter the circumstances we find ourselves, I pray that the Lord will turn all and each of it for, around for our good in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So I'm going to start with explaining to us what a season of testing could mean. Praise the Lord. So I know that um, normally we can we we can understand what it means to be in a season of testing. Many of us might be in that kind of season right now. Myself, I mean, one. Praise the Lord. And literally, we can understand that, yeah, maybe God is testing me. But 
what does it actually mean to be in a season of testing? And I wrote here, I said, a season of testing in a spiritual or life context is a period marked by challenges, difficulties, or trials that can test one's faith, character, resilience, and perseverance. Praise the Lord. This is a season that is marked by a lot of challenges, a lot of difficulties or trials. And it has come to test your faith, it has come to test your character, it has come to test your resilience. At some point you might feel like giving up, you might be, feel like what is happening to me. It got to a point in the life of Job that the wife even told him, curse God and die because this thing is getting too much. You're, you have lost everything, you have lost all you have, you have lost your children, you have lost all your servants, you have lost your cattle, you've lost your animals, everything you have acquired all over the years, you have lost everything. And not just that, look at you, very sick, you can see what is happening to you, there are sores all over your body. It got to a point, even the wife of Job had to say to him, Cause God and die because this thing is getting too much. Praise the Lord. So this can be can be a season of testing that have come to test your faith. It has come to test your character. It has come to test your resilience. It has also come to test your perseverance. Praise the Lord. And I wrote here. I said these these testing seasons are often characterized by adversity, and they can manifest in various aspects of life, including personal, professional, relationship, and spiritual areas. It can, maybe your marital life is going well, but your academic life is not going well. Praise the Lord. Your um, professional life might be going well, but your relationship life might not be going well. So it might not actually be in every area of your life. It can be in a particular area of one's life that this testing season will be, and it has tried you, it has gotten you to a point that at some point you might be like you, as if you don't know what you are doing. Praise the Lord. So this is what it means to be in a season of testing. I don't know who might be in that state right now. Myself, I am in one, so I'm not actually going to explain further. But when you find yourself in this kind of seasons, it has come to test your character. Praise the Lord. It has come to test your resilience. It has come to test your faith in God. And we are like I mentioned, we are going to explore different aspects of this. We are going to talk about um, what is a testing season, what is a season of test, and how to know you are in a testing season. How do you know that what you are going through is not ordinary? How do you know that God is testing you or you are in a testing period that is trying to refine you to a better person? And we are going to talk about how you are going to respond when you find yourself in this kind of seasons in your life. Because believe you me, they will come. Even if you are not going through one right now, they will surely come. So you need to prepare. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says if you fail in the days of um, battle, your strength is small. So even if you are not in a season where you feel like things are not going too well, you better equip yourself, as yourself with the information you are going to get now so that when you find yourself in seasons you don't understand, you can be able to know how to respond to those seasons. Praise the Lord. And we are going to explore people who have passed through testing season and how they were able to scale through those periods in their life. And we are going to also explore why you or why we go through testing season. Praise the Lord. And at the end of the day, we can know how to know the season of testing is over. Pray master Jesus. So now we are going to talk about how to know you are in a testing season. How do you know that what you are going through is not ordinary? You are being tested. Praise the Lord. And I wrote here the number one way you are going to know that you are in a testing season is that there will be increased challenges. Praise master Jesus. A lot of things will be popping out from the left, right, center. Many things will be coming out in ways you cannot imagine. That is one of the ways you can know you are in a testing season. Praise Master Jesus. I had, I passed through one some days ago, some months ago, like it was as if more than three people betrayed me in a week. Like, 
I was like, what is happening to me? I couldn't believe it. Three people very close to me turned, turned around me in a way I couldn't understand. And that is how I knew I need to arrange myself. Praise the Lord. I knew this is not ordinary. Praise Master Jesus. So you will see increased challenges. A lot of things will be coming up in ways you can't imagine. And what do we do in a season like this? Praise the Lord. Um, I have a scripture I want us to read. And it says James chapter 1, 2 to 3. Praise the Lord. If you, if you are there, we can read it quickly. James 1, 2 to 3. Praise Master Jesus. James 1, 2 to 3 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Praise Master Jesus. The testing, um, the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Praise the Lord. So how to know you are in a testing season is there will be increased challenges. Challenges from here and there that you cannot imagine. But the Bible says that when you go through this season, when you find yourself in this situation where you are facing a lot of trials, a lot of temptations, no, consider it all joy, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, praise the Lord. The next point, or the next, um, how to know you are in a season of um, testing, is there will be uncertainty and doubt you will find yourself in a state of confusion. Praise the Lord. You don't know if you should go right or go left or go back. You are at a point where you are confused. Praise the Lord. You are at a point of doubt. Maybe all that you have tried, you have tried um, left, you have tried this method, this strategy, and none is working. Nothing have like, none of them is working. You are at a point of confusion. Praise the Lord. Amen. And in this season, what you have to do is that you have to lean on to the word of God that says in Proverbs 3 verse 5, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Praise Master Jesus. I'll be giving us scriptures to back up this so that when you find yourself in this kind of situations, the word of the Lord will be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Praise the Lord. So when you find yourself in a state where you are confused, where you are in doubt, you don't know which way to go, should you go to the left or the right in the state of uncertainty, know that you are in a testing season and do not fail in the day of battle because if you fail in the day of battle, your strength is small. Praise the Lord. You have to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Praise Master Jesus. And I went on to talk about how to know you are in a, in a, in a testing season is there will be strained relationships. Your relationships will be strained. Even with the closest person around you can betray you. The closest person around you can turn against you. So that is how to know you are in a testing season. Even the people you put your faith on, they can fail you. Praise Master Jesus. So when you see some of these things happening, Know that you need to guard yourself with the word of God. Praise Master Jesus. When you see that your relationships, even the ones you have faith in, are stumbling, you need to guard yourself knowing that this is not an ordinary season. And you have to also be patient with them. Praise the Lord. Don't, don't be hasty in your decision at that season because you might be making a, a lot of mistakes. So you have to be patient with people around you. I have a lot of um, things I would want us to talk about in this area, how to know you are in a testing season, but I would also want us to move further so we don't waste a lot of time. So, like I talked about earlier, another way to know that you are in a testing season is when you lack clarity. You don't know what to do. You don't even know which way to go. You lack 
clarity. You don't know you are in a state of confusion. Let me use the word confusion. You don't know which way to go. Should you go the left? Should you go the right? Should you go the center? You are at a point, maybe you have tried everything you could and they have all failed. So you are at a point of confusion. You lack clarity. You don't know what to do. So that is how to know you are in a testing season. And the word of God for that season is Psalm 119 verse 105 and it says your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path you keep speaking the word of god you keep pro proclaiming the word of god your your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path i'm not going to make mistakes at this point in my life though i don't know which way to go i don't know which way to turn but the word of the lord is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path is going to show me the way he's going to touch me at the shoulder and he's going to say to me this is the way world bearing praise the lord praise my son jesus and i want us to go um okay another point which i wouldn't want, want us to, to miss is um how to know you are in a season of testing is there will be sudden changes Maybe things are going well on a normal ground, then immediately there's a flip. How to know you are in a testing season, just like Job. Everything was perfect, everything was good. If they told him that when he woke up that morning that he's going to lose everything, he's not going to believe it. So the season of testing can come suddenly. It, can, it might not announce to you that it's coming. It's going to, all of a sudden, you find yourself in a situation you can't imagine. That is how to know that this season is not an ordinary season. It, it needs to be handled carefully. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then I want us to move further to talk about how to respond to the seasons of testing in our lives. How do you respond to seasons of testing? When you find yourself in situations you don't know what to do, in situations you are confused, in situations you can't explain. What do you do at this point? What do you do at this moment? And I went on to say that the number one thing you have to do is to pray and seek God. So let's read Psalm 50 verse 15. If we are there, let's read it quickly. Psalm 50 verse 15. How to respond to seasons of testing in our lives. Praise Master Jesus. When you find yourself in situations you cannot explain, in situations that are be beyond you, that are overwhelming, what do you do? Psalm, Psalm 50 verse 15. It says, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. I said that the first thing you have to do is that you have to pray and seek God. And the Bible says in Psalm 50 verse 15, it says, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Praise the Lord. So when you find yourself in, sit in situations you are not in control of, the first thing you have to do is that in that situation, the first thing you have to do is that you have to pray and you have to seek God. And the Bible has given us an assurance that the Lord said, when you call upon me in the day of trouble, he said, I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Another um, scripture also said, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things which you know not about. Meaning that when you call upon God in that situation, he will reveal to you many things which you don't know concerning that season. Praise the Lord. So another part, another scripture also says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And this is Philippians 4, 6. Praise Master Jesus. So when you find yourself in situations you don't know what to do, you have to pray and seek God. Another thing to do in this season, when you find yourself in this season, is that you have to have built faith and you have to trust in God. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Praise the Lord. 
So when you find yourself in these situations, you have to build faith and trust in God. And Hebrews 11, 6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, and that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. So you have to build faith and you have to trust in God, because trusting in yourself will fail you, because at that point you need God in your life. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. So the next thing you need to do when you find yourself in situations or in seasons of testing, you have to build perseverance. Praise Master Jesus. You have to build perseverance. You have to build capacity. You have to build perseverance. This scripture says, if you fail in the day of trouble, your strength is small. Praise Master Jesus. You cannot you cannot measure your strength when everything is going well. We cannot measure how strong we are or how equipped we are when everything is going well. We can only measure it when we are in circumstances of uncertainty. Praise the Lord. That is how you can be able to measure how patient you are, how perseverance, how you how um, you you persevere. Praise the Lord. Amen. And James 1, 12 says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. So you have to build, build perseverance. You have to build capacity in that season. Things shouldn't move you quickly. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. So we are going to talk about the next um, thing you need to do before we move into the next point to how to explore. And this is a season. How to respond in how to respond to seasons of testing. Then you have to learn and you have to grow. I wrote it here. This is a season or this is a time to learn and grow. Praise the Lord. You have to learn. And Romans 8, 22 says, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So this is a time for you to learn. This is a time for you to grow, both in the spirit, both in, in knowledge. It's a time for you to seek the word of God concerning that season. It's a time for you to read materials, Go for knowledge in that area where you are having challenges. Praise Master Jesus. Let me take, for example, if someone is having a medical condition and it has defied um, a medical attention. Praise the Lord. So this is a season in that person's life. So you have to get more knowledge concerning that season of your life. You have to get more knowledge concerning that ill health. You have to also get more knowledge Concerning what God is saying to that sickness, what God is proclaiming when it comes to our health. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. So we are going to move further and we are going to talk about people who have passed through testing season in the Bible. So you will know that you are not the only one who is, who is going through challenges. Bible is always a reference point as Christians. Praise Master Jesus. We always refer to the Bible because it has been tried and it is true. So there are people who have gone through trials, people who have been tested. We read Genesis chapter 22, 1 to 19, and then we saw how God called up Abraham and said, Abraham, I need you to sacrifice your only son, Isaac. And we know how long it took Abraham to get this son, this only son of his, this um, promised child. We know how long it took for them to get this son. And at the end, God is saying, I need you to sacrifice him. And he carried him up to the mountain where God has commanded him to go and sacrifice him. And right there when he was about to sacrifice him, the Spirit of the Lord said, do not hurt that child. Praise Master Jesus. So there are people who have passed through testing season in the Bible and we are going to explore one of them, which is Job. Praise Master Jesus. We, we already talked about Abraham. And we all know the story of Job, right? 
We all know the story of Job. We know how Job lost everything he had in a day. His seven daughters, his um, servants, his animals, all that he had acquired over the years. The only thing left for him was his wife. Praise Master Jesus and his life. And even with his life, we can see he was afflicted with 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 disease he was afflicted with oh my god like when i read the story of job i am like god i don't know if i have the capacity to bear what this man went through i really you can imagine what he went through to the, to the point the wife was to a, to a point a woman is saying cut god and die i know let i i, I don't mind becoming a widow you, you can imagine that because he is going through it. He, he was going through a lot. Praise, praise Master Jesus. This man went through a lot. But there's something he said in Job chapter 1, 20 to 21. I want us to read it. Job 1, 20 to 21. Job 1, 20 to 21. Praise Master Jesus. If you are there, please read for us. Job 1, 20 to 21. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. And Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. If you read from the, the verse 1 of Job chapter 1, you will see um, how the Lord said, you know how he was introduced you know job there's a man named job from the land of Oz, and this man is blameless he feared the lord and he shunned evil like the bible explained who he is then it got to a point the story changed everything changed you know how you know he lost his son his um daughters, his children, his mess servants, his um, uh, cattle, all of that. And at the end of the day, this is what a man who lost everything had to declare. He said, then Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshipped someone who lost his seven children, lost everything. <laughs> and he said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Bible recorded is that Job never sinned against God in that season. Who will go through all of this and still have the mind to say naked I came and naked will I return. So I'm trying to show you examples of people who have gone through testing seasons in their life and when you sit down and check what you are going through calculate it with that of job is it up to can you measure what you are going through to what job went through you can see that maybe it might not even reach quarter maybe have you lost did you lose one person did you lose, this person lost a lot and he still had the mind to say naked i came naked, naked will i return praise master jesus so another person I want us to explore is the person of Joseph. We all know Joseph in the Bible. Are we all listening? Yes. Praise Master Jesus. We have someone in the Bible named Joseph. And we all know what he went through in the hands of his brothers, not even strangers. People from the same lines with him. You know, how how they plotted to kill him, and at the end of the day, they threw him into the well. It wasn't enough for them. They picked him out, and they sold him to slavery. They are his own brothers. Not enemies, so not strangers. His own brothers. Oh, my God. So, 
They sold him into slavery, and you, we all know how the storyline went. And at the end of the day, let's read Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. If we are there, let's read Genesis 50, verse 20. Genesis 50, verse 20. I'm going to read. Are we all there? Um, it says, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. This is the response of, J of Joseph to his brothers. When at the end of the day they came to Egypt to buy corn, and you know, when he now revealed that he is the Joseph that they sold into slavery, they were all afraid and thought maybe he would, he would kill them. But he said, No, you people intended whatever you did to me for evil, but God turned it around for good. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. So this is the mindset I want us to bear. What can we see from the life of Joseph? He forgave. He never withheld iniquity in his heart against his brethren. So when you find yourself in seasons of uncertainty, uncertainty seasons of testing, you have to make sure your heart is right with God and with yourself. So Joseph went ahead to say, you people meant it for evil, but God turned it around for good to save lives. Praise the Lord. Another person I want, I want us to explore, then we can move forward because of time, is David. I want us to talk about the life of David. Praise Master Jesus. So we all know that David, even in his father's house, he was not recognized. To the point when Samuel came to anoint, um, came to, to anoint him, when the Lord said to Samuel, go to the house of um, to to his to I've forgotten the name of Jesse. Jesse. The house of Jesse to anoint one of his sons. So Samuel went to the house of Jesse to anoint one of the, the sons. The Lord did not tell him exactly which one. So when he went there, he called Jesse to bring out his sons. And all the sons passed through Samuel. Just um David was in the in the wilderness. In the wilderness or in the field. In the field, taking care of the cattle. And when the sons passed through Samuel, they were all built up, you know, they been taken care of. But Samuel was not convinced because he hadn't seen the one the Lord had told him about. And he said, is this all your sons? And he said, oh, there is one in the field. You can imagine, there is one in the field taking care of the cattle. And he said, let him be brought. And he said, none of them should sit until, until David arrived. And that is how he was anointed king over Israel. Not only that, when he was anointed, we all still know that Saul, who was the king of Israel, was after his life. Pursued him, we can see from the Bible how um, Saul took his um, warriors, they were looking for David to kill him. Praise Master Jesus. That to the point, let's read Psalm 23, verse 1 to 2. It's a popular scripture. Even if we don't open the Bible, we, we know it. David said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. So David wrote this psalm when he was running away from someone. From so, praise Master Jesus. He had faith in God. So despite what was happening around him, the war or the battle from his father's house to the point the king was after his life, David had this strong conviction in the Lord and he said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to keep this and we have to talk about why we go through testing season. Why do we go through testing season? Why must I go through what I'm going through? Why why is all of this happening to me? You know, there's this popular saying, 
why me? Why is this happening to me? So one of the reasons why we go through testing season is for spiritual growth and maturity. Praise the Lord. Testing seasons are seasons, you know, which God uses to refine us and to mature our faith. Let's open to Job 23, verse 10, and it says, But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. Praise the Lord. For he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. So, when we go through testing seasons, you know, it is a time for spiritual growth and maturity. We go through this season for us to grow and for us to mature in the Lord. He says, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as good. You will not come forth as good if you haven't been tested. We all know the process that God takes goes through to come out as God. It goes through the fire. It goes through the heat. Praise the Lord. Amen. If it doesn't go through that heat, it's not going to come out as God. So it has to go through fire for it to come out as God. And this is what happens to us when we go through testing seasons. When we go through trials, when we go through temptations, God is trying to purify us. God is trying to refine us and bring us forth as gold. And when we go through testing seasons, if it's a season, why do we go through testing seasons? It is for character development. Praise the Lord. We go through testing season for character development. And I, um, the Bible says in Romans 5, 3 to 4, it says, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance perseverance character and character hope when you go through testing seasons it produces character your character is refined you become a better person you become more patient you become more loving you will see yourself becoming so kind you know so when you go through seasons it refines your character and it makes you a better person. If you used to be an impatient person, you will find yourself becoming in love. So that is what testing seasons bring out from us. And another thing is that it, it is a season to strengthen our faith. You know, why do we go through testing season? To strengthen our faith. Because if you don't go through some things, you, can, you might not be able to, you know, be, your faith might not be able to be built. Just like David, when he faced Goliath. He said, just as he have killed the lion, and he have killed, killed the bear. So he already, his faith was built up based on periods he have passed through before. So he killed Goliath, you know, with the word of God, and with the faith he have already built from his past experiences. Praise the Lord. So we also go, when we go through um, testing seasons is for our weaknesses to be revealed. If you don't go through some seasons, well, through some seasons, you might not know that there are many things you need to work on in your life. Praise the Lord. So we are going to go through this, and we are going to talk about the last part of it, and we are going to pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How do you know that the season of testing is over? How do you know that the season of challenges, the season of uncertainty, the season of trauma, um, confusion, how do you know that this, you are coming to the end of this season? How do you know? How do you know? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, how to know that one of the ways you can know that your season of testing is coming to an end is you will find yourself having a sense of peace and assurance. There's this peace peace of God that comes to your heart. There's this peace. <coughs> Tranquility, you know, it comes. There's this knowing. There's this calmness that comes to you. Not, maybe the challenges have not gone away completely, but how to know that you are coming to the end of this season is you feel at peace. Praise the Lord. You feel this peace deep 
down within your spirit. And the Bible says in Philippians 4, 7, And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. So there is this peace of God which transcends, you know, you can't explain it, it's unexplainable. You feel at peace. You are not troubled. Um, the Bible says a thousand may fall by my left and ten thousand by my right side, but none will come. You are not moved. Nothing moves you anymore. You are at peace. Like, there is this peace of God that you cannot explain. It happens and this is the Holy Spirit confirming to you that this season of testing is over or is coming to an end. Praise the Lord. And there is resolution of challenges. Praise the Lord. So whatever it is that was being troubled is being resolved. Maybe someone lied against you. Maybe the truth have come out. So the, that is how to know that this season of testing is over. There is resolution of challenges. Whatsoever it was, that is the problem is being resolved. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says in Romans 8, 28, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Everything that was against you has been turned around for your good. Praise the Lord. And the next, how to know you, how to know the season of testing is over is that there is clarity and direction. In that area you were having confusion, in that area you are not understanding what to do, you don't know if you should go right or go left or go center or stand where you are, now there is clarity, you know what to do. You are sure, you are, you are not guessing, you are not guessing what to do, you now know what exactly to do. There is clarity and there is direction, you have known, God has like the word of the Lord says and he will say to me, from behind, this is the way. Go there, so you know where you are going. You are not confused. Nobody's confusing you anymore. You are sure that you are making the right decision or you are taking the right step. There is clarity. And the Bible says in Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So there is light. When the, when the word of the Lord is a lamp to your feet, so you can see where you are stepping on. You are not stepping on nails. You are not stepping on um, things that will harm you. So there is light, light at your feet. You can yeah. see. And the light on your path is that the road is clear. You know that there is no obstacle. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you have a sense of clarity and a sense of direction. And okay. Because of time. The next one is that there is renewed joy and strength. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are happy. Your joy is renewed. Your strength is renewed. You are happy. Everything has turned around for your good. And the joy of the Lord is your strength already. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the next one is reconnection with God. You have reconnected with God. You are, you are, your life has taken shape. Or you have gotten peace in that particular area. And the next point is that you see yourself in gratitude, increased gratitude. You are thank you are always thankful, always thinking of the mercies of God and thankful to God for what He has done for you. You see yourself thank you feel like sharing it to the whole world, what God has done for you. And that is when you see us coming out for testimony. God did this for me, God did that for me, maybe I was praying for this and God answered me. So that is what happens when a season of testing is over. And um, so you, the last point I'm going to give is that you see yourself um, in opportunities for service. You see yourself that, you know, maybe you pass through this season, you see yourself using that season you have passed through to um, serve others. Maybe you went through delay and you passed, um, so, like you, you came out successfully. When you see someone else in that season, you will know what to say to that person. You will know how to advise that person. You will know how to render service to that person. You can feel the person's pain. You can feel other people's um, pain. 
you can be able to know what other people are going through. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, without wasting time, we have been able to explore what the, our topic today says, the season of testing. And the anchor scripture is Genesis 1 um, to 19. We talked about Abraham, how God tested Abraham. And after the test, he was declared, you know, the father of all nations. And the Lord blessed him mightily. And we talked about how to know you are in a season of testing, how to respond to seasons of testing, people who have passed through testing in, their, in the Bible, and why we go through testing season, and how to know the season of testing is over. It's really a comprehensive um, topic. Assuming we had time, we would have maybe interacted more with it, you know. But I am so grateful for the time we had to be able to explore this. So now you know that some things you are going through, God is actually testing you yes. to build character in you, to build faith. You are not actually going through it for a waste. There is a reason why God is allowing you to go through that season to bring you out as a better person. And one thing I have discovered in life is that if you have the call of God upon your life, or if you are a pace setter, if God has destined you to be ahead, and you have people... Um, following you behind sometimes you might go through things that you were not supposed to go through but because of the people coming behind you God allowed you to go through that season so you can be a better counselor to the people coming after you praise God so when you see yourself going through some seasons it's not it's not a time to ask it's not a time to ask why me why is this happening to me and all of that it is a time for you to sit down and build capacity because the bible says if you fail in the days of adversity your strength is small praise the lord i want us to bow our heads in prayer and begin to ask the lord for strength begin to ask that you will not fail in the day of adversity you will not fail in the day of your testing that the spirit of the lord will guide you the lord will be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path that the lord will give you clarity the lord will give you what it takes to go through that season and come out successfully open your mouth and begin to pray that the light of god will shine upon your path that the lord will give you clarity the lord will give you understanding and the lord will give you the grace to call upon him because he said we should call upon him in the day of trouble that he will answer and he will show us great and mighty things which we know not about and i want us to pray pray open your mouth and begin to pray because the lord is willing to answer he said call upon me in the day of trouble i will answer he already promised he will answer so if you are going through a season you don't understand you are in a season of testing and trying of confusion you lack direction, you lack clarity, you don't know what to do at this point. Should you go right? Should you go left? Should you go front? You don't know what to do. Are you at that point in your life? Open your mouth and begin to pray for direction. Open your mouth and begin to pray for clarity. You will hear a voice from behind saying to you, this is the way. What there is. Open your mouth and begin to pray that the Lord will speak to you, the Lord will guide you, the Lord will, will lead you to the path of righteousness. You will not make mistakes, your feet will not slip, you will not go the wrong way, you will not go the way of regret, you will build capacity in this season. Open your mouth and begin to pray, Lord, we thank you for what you are doing already. Thank you for leading us, thank you for guiding us in this season, thank you for not allowing us to go the wrong way. Thank you for being a lamp on to our feet and the light on our hearts. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, for there is an assurance that we have said when we come upon you in the day of trouble, you said you will answer us and you will show us great and mighty things which we know not about. Lord, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor. We be thou exalted spirit of the living. Thank you for your word that have come forth. Lord, we pray that it will sink in our hearts, even as my voice will cease. We pray that the Holy Spirit will teach 
us deeper and deeper mysteries, even the ones I couldn't reveal Amen. to your children, oh God. I pray that your voice will keep speaking to us and me also. I will not be a loser. Amen. I will also be a benefactor of the word of the Lord in Amen. the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Amen. Spirit of the Lord. Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hello, my Shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters, yeah, yeah, yeah.